the problem with the Spanish guitar is that um, you you had to use the whole. If you take an arch top guitar, the um, the difference between the treble re the treble register and the bass register is very great. I mean, the Spanish guitar you have for me my interpretation and for what the the precedent that I heard from the reports about how the original Torres guitar sounded uh, and for the the ones we hear in now because uh, there is several that have been used and you had to you had to produce an instrument which has a treble register that is clear it has a separation of the voices is is warm and, and it, it, it crystalline warm and the bass it has to be very resonant the resonant has to give the impression that it comes from a well or a cave, you know. So um, that to me, they are the two facets that determine what I consider a good sounding Spanish style guitar. Now to do that, you, you got the structure and you have um, a shape and the wood and you have to adapt all the woods to achieve that. Now in the arch top guitar, well, again, you require quality and all that, but the basis, uh, the register, is limited because the, the instrument is thicker, it's larger, and the, the resonance, the natural resonance of the instrument is a much higher level than is at the, you know, in the Spanish guitar. And that's where the knowledge, uh, the interest, and the lack of the violero to produce it. Uh, but the, the same the spruce for me it should be exactly exactly the same procured to make a spanish guitar that an arch top guitar but the guitar is that um, um is it's very complex um the 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 guitar the soundboard of the guitar it works in a way like a like a fundamental note on a guitar on, on this note the fundamental note on a guitar string so when you play a, a note, that fundamental note is divided into partial and overtones. They build up, pass it to the soundboard, and the soundboard amplifies that in accordance with what is in there, and that produces the sound. Now, um, if you say, for example, if uh, like a modern guitar making, some of them, they use cedar, and they cut that cedar to one millimeter or less than a millimeter. What happens? You kill the quality that the wood, the spruce has to produce that range of harmonics to produce the sound that, well, all those people who know a little bit about quality of sound love in the Spanish guitar. And needs to control that wood and the thicknesses and the structure to be able to. Uh, use that and enhance it uh, to make a guitar with a soundboard that pro produces. Now, uh, we beginning to understand how the soundboard works and the different modes of vibration. And the situation is that one day we could control more factors in order to enhance even more the possibilities of the soundboard. And that is, I mean, um, José Ramírez III, one of the most um, uh, poignant phrases that he used several years ago, he said that uh, now we, we got here uh, with guitar making, now sign has to give us a hand. And that scientific knowledge has to tell us how it can use, and he's doing it. But it is very complex at times, you've got to be very careful. But in my view, it's telling me uh, that I'm in the right way. You know, this is to me the most important thing. And, uh, uh, and so the, the soundboard, is, it just moves like a fundamental on the string. And it's only the first five modes mod of vibration on the soundboard. The most important because the frequencies are the laws of the Lord. When they go up the fifth or the sixth uh, mode of vibration, yeah, it's practically 
impossible to control. But first, third and fourth, which are the most important, there is possibility that we'll be able to understand if we know how to select a piece of wood and have the experience how to do it. Before um, I published my book on Torres in 87, um, very few people heard about Torres and, and very few people, if any, heard the, the sound of Torres. It's only by hearsay. Now, what they done since the, the, the Torres uh, guitars became available and people had a chance to play them, and some of them sound wonderful and, and all that. But what we don't know is an answer to your question, how much those instruments they have been interfered with. And what we hear today, uh, with all due respect, I don't think it approaches what, we, what people heard 150 years ago, when those guitars, which is left Torres guitars, and they were open to the public. And, and, and this is what is another um, sort of field that we have to look into. Because what they do now, uh, I think they make compromises with the string. They already have a concert of sound, but it is a concert, but that doesn't mean it's a real concert that that instrument had 150 years ago. And uh, this is what we have, we need a bit more research. And, for example, the, the Pape Machier Torres in Barcelona, well, the soundboard has been, well, it's great, clean, sanded, and, and if you go around many of the others, they are the same, they have been interfered with. They still retain a lovely quality, uh, in part, um, it's due to the, well, the majority of it is because Torres knew how to work out the guitar to a resonance that it was, um, um, he designed and well he arrived with a, I think, uh, a great comprehension of the acoustic, although it might have been uh, innate, you no, know, you know, empirical, that is, he gained confidence in what he, he was doing uh, through the results he was obtaining on the sound. And just to give you an example, if you throw our um, mind to 19, no, 1853, um, which is Torres has only been making guitars, say, well, a few years. Uh, arrived to Sevilla, which is Sevilla and that ta at that time was practically the capital of Spain. In, and the newspapers, the, the, new, the daily newspapers, they, accept, they already put him as a, a wonderful guitar maker. That is, it wasn't publicity, it was the, the value of the instruments and the people who played. And the people got ca captivated by that sound. Now, if you read the, the, the reviews of the, the guitars, Torres guitars in the hands of Arcas and others in the 1860s, in England and in, in Spain, it's, the sound is, it was really very, um, emotive for, for everybody. I mean, they do really make it clearly, that not only the interpreter, but the, the sound was great. And I think 150 years after those instruments, they've been, you know, they've been dead, so to speak, for many years, because some of them they haven't been played. And so it's a field that we ought to, you know, to be a bit cautious about it, because it, I don't think that the sound that we hear today from the Torres guitar is the sound that you should have heard sort of 150 years or 100 years ago. Mm -hmm.